All right, so how many of you like politics? How many like geography? How many like both? Oh yes, you're a winner today. It is your lucky day, something that only happens once every 10 years. Oregon lawmakers just released their proposals for our new congressional and legislative districts. And these could end up having a really big impact on who represents you. This is what Oregon's current congressional map looks like. There's five districts, the four on the west side of the state, represented by Democrats, and the big one on the east side, represented by a Republican. Well, now, for the first time since 1982, Oregon is getting a brand new seat in Congress. That's because our population went up so much compared to other states in the 2020 census. So now the question is, where are we going to put that sixth district? The tricky part is each of the districts have to be equal in population, give or take, get this, one person. And to the political parties, it's not just about the number of people, it's about how those people vote. Here are two possibilities. The map on the left side of the screen was drawn up by Democrats in the legislature. You can see many of the districts are touching the Portland metro area, including one that extends all the way across the Cascades into eastern Oregon. The map on the right side of the screen was drawn by Republican lawmakers. It looks a little different. They've got the metro area in a more compact district. So here's how these two maps could play out politically. Based on an analysis from the website 538, the Democrats map would create five safe or mostly safe seats for them in Congress and one solidly Republican district. You got to give them some. They're similar to how things on are right now. But the GOP map, ooh, that would be different. That would create two solid Democratic districts, one solid Republican, and the rest would kind of be up for grabs, meaning they could swing blue or red. So you can see each party has drawn the map to try to favor themselves more. No real surprise there. Earlier today, I spoke with two demographers. Yep, that's a thing at the Population Research Center at Portland State. I asked them what they think about these map proposals and how our changing population is influencing how these districts are drawn. Well, I, I think that Oregon has uh, this challenge because it's grown faster than other states and gained a seat. After the, after the last census, Oregon just had to tweak its districts to maintain equal population across them so it could make more minor changes. But um, this time around, more significant changes are needed to accommodate the new congressional district. And there's no way to do that in a non-disruptive way. Yeah, Bend was the fastest growing part of the state. Uh, so again, the, the two maps are very different. You know, Bend is in District 3 in one of the maps and in District 2 of the other map. But, but because it's grown faster than the rest of either District 2 or, Dis or 3, for that matter, it's going to take up a bigger portion of, of whatever districts that it's in than it, than it does currently. Well, I think one thing that's important is that how, what happens in the Willamette Valley, 40% of the population growth in the state occurred in the, in the greater Portland Tri-County metro area. So there's a great pressure to further divide that large area and, and how that happens will be very important. One thing we've seen consistently over the decades is that um, the diffusion of the, the black population of Portland, for example, out of central Portland, um, it's not been declining but it's been more evenly spread across the county. So looking carefully at how that constituency is represented is getting more challenging because it's not uh, as compact of an area as time goes by. So what happens now? Well, Democrats and Republicans are supposed to agree on three maps, one for congressional districts, one for state Senate districts, and one for state House districts. This is supposed to happen by September 27th, but it is possible they won't be able to come to an agreement. In that case, a panel of judges will be put in charge of the congressional map, and Secretary of State Shemaya Fagan will have to come up with two legislative maps. Remember, she is a Democrat, so Republicans might not want her to be in charge, but Fagan says she will put together a commission made up of ordinary Oregonians to help her with the process. By the way, the legislature's track record of coming up with a redistricting plan that everyone agrees on is not so great. In the past 60 years, they've only come up with one plan that hasn't been challenged or vetoed by the governor. That agreement happened last time around in 2011.